Hi, my name's Will. Um, I've been coming to C3 Church for about just over three years. A good friend of mine um, who lives local in the area invited me to come to, to C3 when it was at Endeavour. And so uh, my wife and I decided to come. My, my parents, they moved here in the 80s. So over in Tonga, that's, um, you know, the, the Christianity is like the main faith over there. So we, I went to like a uniting church from pretty much when I was born through my uh, teenage years. Um, and that consisted of us going to church on a Sunday, reluctantly, but um, you know, over the years, you sort of saw the, the seed that the plant, like the, my parents planted in me, like, you know, uh, Christ died for us, you know, the whole God concept, praying before meals. So yeah, the parents definitely paved the way in terms of um, the Christianity playing a role in my life. And it wasn't until about 2006, I think it was, at the end of my, high school years, I was invited to go to just the church out at Borkham Hills. And I heard a guy named Sanger preach there one time. I, th I felt God spoke to me in a way at, at that point in time. And like, um, I've never heard the word preached in that way. I've never heard um, a relationship offered in that way, that there is a relationship, relationship between you and Jesus. Um, and I responded that night. And so 2006, I gave my life to Christ. You know, just like any other relationship, um, that you're in. There's highs and lows, um, mainly my fault. <laughs> um, you know, I've drifted away, I've drifted in, but I feel like God's always been there because I knew that He was always near. And I would never, I would never like drift away from Him in terms of like, not nah, just completely disregard God for, or Jesus for what He's done for me. I was always going around about my way of doing things, doing life my own way. When things started going good, yep, yeah, thank God for it. But then I still try to do things in my own strength. And then a few hiccups, um, uh, came up along the way, you know, losing my dad in 2013. Even growing up, like my parents, um, because they're so hard-headed, my relationship with my mum wasn't that, wasn't that great as like, you know, mum, mother and son type dynamic. Especially in my teenage years, you know, we struggled to get along. Um, and so when dad passed away in 2013, that added more pressure between her and I and my siblings and just our just in the family home, you know, it got to a point where I was homeless for about two, three weeks, you know, especially when, 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 when dad died, there was a void that needed to be filled in terms of father figure in the house. I mean, I felt like dad said, when he passed, he said, oh, I need you to look after the family. But I didn't know my mum was gonna cope that way because I haven't lost anyone I've loved for the last 20 or so years. So mum struggled with that. And eventually, you know, I was asked to leave the, leave the home but in, for some reason, I was always, I always thought I was going to be okay because I know, hey, like, I'm pretty sure God's got my back here. Like, you know, He's got me out of most things in my life, but I'm pretty sure if I can just stay faithful, mind you, I wasn't, I wasn't reading the Bible every day. I wasn't going to church every, every week. I was, I just knew that, like, there's something inside me that will get me through this. And on, and on the other side of that, I played footy for like, you know, a number of years professionally, and then when Dad died, literally footy ended. So my livelihood was gone. My father was gone. Relationship with Christ was just on the brink because, you know, I was I was struggling mentally and you know. And then at the end of it, you know, I signed a part-time contract with a with a, another football football team, but through that I met someone who could provide me a home, give me a home. And it just like I look back at it now and I'm like, God's always had my back in some way or another. Um, and through that I had no qualifications for work. I had no relationship with my daughter at the time, my ex-partner, you know, that was all broken. Um, and there were so many pieces everywhere. And I was just thinking, how am I gonna get this together? Because I can't do it. Met my wife in Minto pub. You don't meet anyone in Minto pub. You know, <laughs> like I was out with some friends and obviously just trying to cope the best way possible with alcohol. And here comes this girl from the Shire. And I'm like, what are you doing here? <laughs> Now, I'm not, I wasn't looking for any relationship or anything like that. Um, I was just trying to, you know, deal with the loss of my father. And then she comes along and I just wanted to be a good friend because she lost her dad when she was 16. So that, that was like the, the draw card or like what, you know, started conversations. But at the same time, I was like, hey man, I've got baggage. You don't want any of this. Six years later, I married her. <laughs> so I don't, I don't know, like, you know, you tell me that God works in mysterious ways. Um, in the brokenness that I was in, um, you know, he's this fantastic woman who walks in. We build a relationship together. I've got two daughters um, that call her the bonus mum. My relationship with my ex-partners 
there's a lot of respect between us. And I can only, I can, I can only think that, that God had a hand in all this. Um, you know, I was able to buy a home. Now, I'm not here to toot my horn. I was, here, I was able to buy a home two years ago with my wife. Like, I was homeless six years ago. Like, you, coming from there to now, um, it's hard to say that it was all me. The person I was three and a half years ago that walked through these doors is different to the person now. And it's not because of any self-help books. Yes, they're great, but I truly believe that when I've heard James preach about proximity with, with Jesus, and that's been my big focus this year. Um, so being in close proximity with Jesus, that's where the change happens. Um, now he's carried me through those tough times, but I wasn't really in close proximity. I, just, I think I just had faith and believed that he would get me out of it. But in terms of changing my character as a person, okay, we've done the whole fixed will thing. What can we do for the community now? And a Bible verse where it says like, Jesus has come that I might have life and life abundantly. Now that doesn't mean have all the money in the world, but my mind right now, I've, that's, this is the most freest I've ever felt probably in the last, you know, probably the, the, for the whole of my life. With freedom comes, it's like contentment, knowing that I can't do it on my own strength. When times do get tough, like, okay, cool. Like I know God's got my back here because he's got, he's had my back the last X amount of years. Um, so it gives me a sort of hope that I think we'll be fine. Um, just be faithful because he will provide a way. Um, and yeah, that's where we're at. <laughs>